thank you for your great and awesome goodness. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that your goodness pursues us, that your love pursues us, that you come to us. You've given us Jesus so that we can be yours and we belong to you. Your love is so great. Your goodness is so great. And you are so good to us. Help us to always be mindful of that and cherish it and to live in the goodness. So I just want to uh, share some announcements with you this morning uh, before we keep going. Um, uh, Tiffany, you can come on up so you're ready to share your announcement. First of all, a reminder of your consistory elder and deacon nomination ballots. They are due next week Sunday. There's a box on the table in the commons area where you can place your nominations. So get those in by next week, the 20th, is when we need those in by nominating two elders and two deacons for the next term on consistory. Please prayerfully consider it. Talk to people that you're considering that you feel led to, uh, to nominate and uh, ask them about their willingness and, and be praying about it too. If, if you're, you know, God calls you to this role, uh, it's a very important thing. So prayerfully be approaching this whole time for our congregation of nominating elders and deacons to serve on our leadership team. Also want to remind you of the pigs in the blanket. I made some pigs in the blanket this past weekend. I was there, and Jody did too, and uh, there were a bunch of us there working hard. We uh, we broke a record, I think, on Friday night, and we broke it again on Saturday morning. And uh, I think we got, uh, I think we crossed the, the 70 dozen, uh, 75 dozen yesterday, just yesterday. That was because I was there. <laughs> No, because Jody was there. <laughs> but a great crew is there. But do we have some more to make yet? There is some more uh, that's planned to be made tomorrow night. So we need all hands on deck tomorrow night to turn out the last batch of the Pigs in the Blanket, a great fundraiser for our new building program. Uh, just some great efforts. And big thank you to Glenn and Paula and to Jen for pulling this all together, others on that team, and those of you that have served. If you haven't yet, it's really pretty easy, and it's, it's fun to be there together. So tomorrow night at the Youth House, starting at 5, 5 at the Youth House, and if you can't make it at 5, get off, get off work a little later, just come when you can. We need all hands on deck, and uh, many hands make light work and turn out a lot of pigs. And there are pigs here this morning for you to buy. Pigs in the blanket, $15 a dozen. They have uh, four coolers of them this morning, so you can take them home with you today. Uh, there will also be uh, those available at Bethel North in the freezer there, so you can come and pick them up during the week. And uh, it's first come, first serve, so come and get your pigs. Uh, Tiffany, you can uh, come and share. This is really a, a pretty cool thing that Tiffany has put together. She'd like to share with you about. Well, hello, everybody. So I so we as a worship team were talking about what we could do to augment what pastors have been talking about with the love of God. And so we decided to do a free Christmas free Christmas season mission project. We didn't know about the snow coming during the holidays. So I, I promise it's still free Christmas. I'm calling this the Extravagant Love Project, and it goes along with the series. And so what we're doing is we are loving our neighbor through hard circumstances such as abuse and things like that. And we're making these bags, hopefully we'll put them together next week Sunday. Um, we'll pray over the items, we'll pray over the women that are receiving the items, and but we need items. So that's where you guys come in here. And so we would like for you guys to go to the, the corn tree in the middle of the comments, take a slip, look through all the different items that are needed. There's quite a few that have been taken already, but I did find some more on my list that I forgot last week. So <laughs> if you don't mind, if you've already gotten something and you want to do something new that's more exciting to also bring, then um, go ahead and check the list. There's five four sheets in the back, five sheets in the back. Um, sign your name, we need 10 of each item. So that's why I need all of you guys. There's something as small as toothpaste, and there's as big as a book, so, and a t-shirt. So there's things of all kinds of prices and variances, but think of how much God has given to you when you're making these, when you're deciding what to give to them. Find this stuff. So um, be extravagant with that love on these women. 
and it's a it's a connection with a ministry called Whispers of Love, Hope, and Joy. I have been uh, connecting with the founder of that ministry, Deb Rensing, from uh, from Sioux Center, and it's just a marvelous ministry for women that are in abusive situations that are trying to get out of that. And this is caring for just basic needs for these women. So it's a great way to love our neighbor. And uh, really appreciate you putting this together, Tiffany. So this is a wonderful way for us to do that and uh, all of us to do that together as a congregation. So check it out and let's uh, let's pour out the love. Yes. Thank you, Tiffany. All right, we're going to receive our morning offering. Uh, all our giving, all our singing, all of that is done to God's glory. To praise Him for the abundant, extravagant, loving God, the goodness of God showered on our lives all the time. When we give of our gifts, when we bring our tithes and our offerings, it's an, an, an acknowledgement of that, that he is the source of all that we have, and that, that when we trust him, he will bountifully supply. And giving our tithes and offerings, that's an expression of trust. So do it as an expression of trust today. Do it as an expression of worship and thanks to God. And give with joy in your heart. I'll invite you kids to come forward to receive your gifts, your tithes, and your offerings. And as we do, we're going to sing this beautiful song, a confession of, of, of how we stand in the love and the salvation of Jesus and the love of God.
and in him you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. And remember that passage. Paul uses that metaphor of a building to describe how God intends for believers to be joined together in Jesus, becoming a spiritual temple in which God lives by his spirit. And you'll remember that it's with that intention in mind that Paul prays the prayer that we've been saying together these past several weeks. He goes on in Ephesians 3, knowing that this is God's purpose for us, he goes on and he says, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom the whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. Let's say these words together again. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Paul prays that the Holy Spirit will give us power to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and power to know this love, right. the very love of God. Now over the past several weeks, we've been looking at the love of God. We've been looking at the love of Christ, the love of God in Christ. And we've been seeking to know this love and to know how great it is. And we've looked at this love's cost, the supreme cost of this love. We've seen how great this love is by seeing how undeserving we are of this love. That is how great it is. We are so undeserving as enemies of Christ who died for us while we were enemies of sinners. And we've seen this love's lavish benefits. Not only did we not deserve it, but we received incredible benefits. We became children of God, loved by God as sons and daughters and co-heirs with Christ of all things, all things, what we're promised. And we've seen also how great this love is by how freely it has been given. Jesus willingly died for us, laid down his life for us. God, nobody was putting anybody in a corner and making them do this, making God or Jesus do this. They did it freely. God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit did it freely for us. All of those things testify to how great the love of Christ is. The love of God is for us in Christ. So how does knowing all of this about the love of Christ help us be the people that God intends for us to be? I mean, why does Paul pray that we know this love? That we know how great this love is, that we be filled with this? Why does he just, why doesn't he just pray that we be more loving? Why didn't he go to God and say, God, just make these people more loving? That would have been a simple prayer to pray. He prays this prayer. Why is it that he focuses his prayer on grasping and knowing how wonderfully great the love of God in Christ is, rather than asking God to just simply make us more loving? Well, I think the reason is, is because it is only in knowing and grasping and thereby experiencing the love of God for us in Christ, that we will even begin to be able to show the kind of love that God wants us to have for one another. The kind of love God wants us to have for, another, for one another is actually pretty radical. It is really pretty, a pretty radical kind of love. Here's how Jesus states it in a scene found in Matthew chapter 22. And begin at verse 34. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So Jesus here states that this, that 
states one of God's, that this is one of God's two greatest commandments. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. This is the kind of love that we are being called to. This is the kind of love that God wants us to have for one another. Love your neighbor as yourself. And when you think about that, that is way more, way more than just being nice and friendly toward another person. That is way more than, than doing something helpful and kind for someone. I mean, think about the way that you love yourself. First of all, just accept the fact that you do love yourself. All of us do. It is a given. This, Jesus just says, love your neighbor as yourself. He's assuming this, that you love yourself. All of us do. All of us want the best for ourselves. All of us have a powerful instinct for self-preservation and for self-fulfillment. All of us will do our best to make sure that we have food to eat, that we have clothes to wear, that we have a safe and comfortable place to live. We want security. We want to be healthy. We want our life to have meaning. We want our we want to be loved and to, to, to be a and to have the blessing of friendship in our lives. We want to be happy. We want to be content. All of us want that. We want all of these things for ourselves, and we can list many, many more things that we naturally, instinctively want for ourselves. We want the best for ourselves. It's part of who we are, and it's not bad to desire these things. It's not bad to desire these things. In fact, it's the way we were created to be. God created us to care very much about our happiness and our well-being, our personal happiness and well-being. That's how God created us to be. Jesus is telling us to care just as much about the happiness and well-being of others as we do about our own. He says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. He's telling us to seek to ensure the needs and longings of our neighbors are met just like we would our own. Just as fervently as we pursue our own needs and our own desires, we need to do that for our neighbor. He's telling us to make it a priority, a priority for them just as much as it is a priority for us. Not as a second thought or when it's easy or convenient. He says, as yourself. We don't take care of ourselves as a second thought or only when it's easy or convenient. It's a priority. It is our first instinct. And we're supposed to love each other that way? When you think about it, that is really radical. To care just as much for our neighbor's needs and desires as we do for our own. To want the fulfillment of my neighbor's longings just as much as I want the fulfillment of my own. To want to ensure my neighbor's happiness just as much as I want to ensure my own. We quite naturally find ourselves thinking, we can't do that. I can't do that. It sounds impossible because we naturally think that really doing what Jesus is talking about means that rather than, rather than loving my neighbor as myself, I will have to love my neighbor instead of myself. Rather than loving my neighbor as myself, we think we have to just give that all up and love my neighbor instead of myself. We, we wonder, how can I do both? If I have to dedicate and devote my time and energy and resources to meeting my neighbor's needs just as I would my own, then my own needs and desires will always be preempted. This command to love my neighbor as I love myself feels like a threat, in a way, to being able to love do I have to actually have to give up my desire for happiness and only seek it for others at the expense of my own? That's where my mind <clears throat> start to go. And the answer to that question lies in the first command. And that's why it's the first command. That's why Jesus says this is the first and greatest commandment. Because it's the first commandment that makes the second commandment doable. 
Jesus says the first commandment and greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. What that means is that we need to look to God for the satisfaction of our deepest longs. We need to look to God to satisfy our longing for joy, happiness, fulfillment, all those things that we naturally want. This is directing us to look to God for those things. Here's how John Piper puts it. Love God with all your heart means find in God a satisfaction so profound that it fills up all your heart. Love God with all your soul means finding God a meaning so rich and so deep that it fills up all the aching corners of your soul. Love God with all your mind means finding God the riches of knowledge and insight and wisdom that guide and satisfy all that the human mind is meant to be. In other words, take all your natural longings for love, joy, fulfillment, peace, satisfaction, security, all the longings of your heart and your soul and your mind and focus them on God, letting him satisfy all those longings with himself. God tells us to come to him. Come to him and he will meet our deepest needs. He says that in his word. He promises to give us fullness of joy. He promises to satisfy our heart, our soul, our mind with all that he is for us in Jesus. It is his love that will meet the deepest longings of our hearts and then in turn enable us to love our neighbor. Because we have all of that need for joy, for love, all those longings met in him. We can then turn that love that we see from him toward our neighbor. It means that we can love our neighbor as ourselves. I think this is why Paul prays that we will know the love of Christ. That's why he prays that we will be filled with the fullness of God. He wants our need for love and the deepest longings of our hearts to be satisfied in God. That's what he's praying in his prayer. He wants our security to be anchored in the love of God. He wants us to know how wide and long and high and deep is the love of God so that we will know that we can absolutely rely on him to take care of us and to meet our needs. Knowing all of that can free us up to love one another with the kind of love God commands kind of love that he wants to see in his family. And it's that kind of love for one another that will knit and join us together into a holy temple where God dwells. It is that kind of love that has its source in God and, and his love for us in Christ. Listen to the way John talks about it in 1 John chapter 3. He says, dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God. See, it's all starting with, begins with, it has its source in God, is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed him. These next two verses are are talking about the immensity of God's love, the cost, the, the benefits, the, the undeservedness, and the, the, the freedom of it. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. What an amazing gift. This is, not, this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. This is great love. This is huge love, and it all comes from God. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. This is an easily turned that phrase. Uh, we can love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, here it is, God lives in us. There's that holy temple, that place where God dwells. It's because of the love that we have that we share with one another. When we, if we love one another, God lives in us. His love is made complete in us. That's why Paul prays that the love of God fill 
of us, the love of Christ, uh, dwell within us, that we be filled with the fullness of God, because when God is, is the source of all that love, we can love one another and become the holy temple where God lives, where God himself dwells. Our love for one another has its beginning in God's love for us. So we can truly love others as we love ourselves when we are filled with the love of God in Christ, the fullness of God himself. I just had a conversation this morning as we were setting up for, uh, for worship, talking about a situation that required this person I was talking to to have a lot of patience. That I said, boy, you have to have a lot of patience to, to handle that. And, and I said, uh, where, how does that go for you? And, and he said, I sure don't do it on my own. I get a lot of help. God. That's the only way I can do it, is His help. And that's true. God will be our help. God will help us have that love. When we feel incapable of it, when we feel impatient with the person that we're trying to love, when we're struggling to show that love, we can ask for God's help, and His love filling us will enable us to do that. I have times where I'm going to a situation where I know I need to show God's love to someone, and I am feeling so weak and so incapable of doing it that I ask him for his help. And I ask him to, to give me what I don't have and I find him filling me, flowing through me, and helping me love. And I find that like, it doesn't drain me, it fills me. It's because of him. It's because of him working through us. That's how his love works. And when we think about giving our resources, you know, some of the ways we love people is to give. Sometimes we feel like, if I give, will I have enough for me? God promises, yes, you will. You'll have more than enough. We just had a wonderful story this past month about the Okoboji Bible Conference that testifies to God's love and his faithfulness. Some of you may have heard this story, but we went into September with the Okoboji Bible Conference, $115,000 short of our annual budget budgeted income. And our fiscal year ends at the end of September. So in the month of September, we needed to have $115,000 come in. It looked impossible. We said, this is a God-sized number. And within two weeks, 90,000 of that came in. Two weeks left to go in the fiscal year, there was just over 20 some thousand left to go. And within a week, that was down to $13,000. There was still that deficit, and we were still wondering, where is it going to come from? About a year ago, a person, a friend of the conference, passed away, and he left money in his will for the conference. We had no idea when it would come in or even what the amount was. On the very last day of our fiscal year, September 13th, a check came in the mail from that estate for $13,000. <laughs> all our needs when we need it, on time, it's never early, it's never late. And so when he calls us to love by giving, uh, what Tiffany's inviting us to do right now, with whispers of hope, love, and joy, she said, be extravagant, be generous, just do it. When you do that, you find God's love supplying and his, and his resources supplying. And you just trust him. Say, God, this is going to be you loving through me. That's when he shows up in powerful, beautiful, wonderful ways that bring glory to him. Because that's what it's all about. It all goes back to you. When we love one another with the love of Christ, it all is to his praise and glory. So people of Bethel, let's keep praying. Let's keep praying that God will fill us with his love. Pray that prayer for Bethel every day prayer of Paul. Pray, pray that prayer for you. I pray for me every day. I pray, Father, out of your glorious riches, I pray that you will fill me with the love of Christ. Pray that for yourself. Pray that for your family. Pray that for our church. Let's keep asking God, looking to him to satisfy the deepest longings of our hearts with his love. And let's love one another. Let's love one another with a never-ending love. 
that we find in him. It is never in it is never run out. It's an infinite resource that we can rely on. Let's pray. Oh God, we are weak, but you are strong. We are not very loving, but you are supremely loving. Help us to be people you call us to be. Help us to love one another with the love of Christ that we have experienced. Your love poured into our hearts by the power of Spirit. We ask that you will fill us, that you will help us to love, that you will use us to, to be a blessing to one another and to those in our world. Amazing thing can happen in our lives when we trust in your love, Father, when we, when we love in your name. So help us to be open to that. May it all bring glory to you, our great and awesome God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for promising you all that we need. Praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together. Go for it in his love and show his love.